Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. Um, I was working on that awkward shaped triangular chassis piece and I ran out of gas. So I had to think of something else that I could do. Well, this is just a little bit of, uh, you know, something that needed doing but uh, not of massive importance. This is the vacuum canister for the um, vacuum wipers. It just holds a bit of vacuum in reserve, you know, for if you lose engine vacuum. So what I, so I, I looked at the screws that were holding it on. I thought, well, I'm not going to get any more of those. So I bought, so I bought some of these. These are stainless steel Allen bolts. And they're 100 mil long, about getting on for four inches long. I'll show you the one that came off. This is the one that came off. There's one of the screws. Yeah. So this one is rusted out. So when I went to the old Ford rally the other day, I found this one. which is similar but not quite the same but it, it does appear to be in good condition the thing that was different about it is that this neck is a different thread there so the fitting that screwed into that one which was an 8th NPT won't go into here but just by accident I was looking for something else and I found this which does thread into there and when I put a bit of sort of goop on it, it'll be a good enough seal for vacuum, I would have thought. So that goes on there. So I've got these screws. And I thought instead of just clamping it down to the inner wing, you know, so that you've got dirt and rust collecting between here and here, I'd space it off. I've got this um, piece of stainless steel tubing so I've cut two pieces. This one's as long as I could get it, yet still be able to get a nut on. And this one's a bit shorter. But as you can see, there is a gap between the canister and the inner wing. So that will stop that from collecting debris and moisture in there. Um, so there you go, just a simple little job. It's not permanently fitted because I think it's... I think really you need to do this screw up before you fit this. But it's mocked in place, the parts are there, the nuts are there. I'll probably use nylock nuts and I might shorten that bolt. When I ran the engine before, there must have been a big air leak from this, the holes from the holes in the bottom of the uh, other canister. Okay, that's just a little job that I wanted to do. The other job that I want to do, like I say, because I, I don't have any welding gas, this is the horn. I believe this is the correct horn for this job. I might be wrong, that doesn't look very factory the way that's bent there, but it does fit. Now there should be, there should be a um, captive nut there, but there isn't. So what I'm going to do is drill through there, and I'll probably just drill right the way through, drill through the front piece as well, and then put drill one of the holes oversize and put. Um, you know, a spacer tube and bolt it all up tight. Okay, leave it with me then and I'll try and get this fitted. And the other thing I'll do, I'll probably put a radiator in. I want to put the radiator in, I want to paint, put some paint on that bit of metal there as well. Just a couple of little tinkering jobs. I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Hello. I've drilled a hole there and I've drilled 
a bigger hole there. That one's about 10 mil and that one's about 16 mil. And this was a wheel nut or lug nut if you like from some sort of mini alloy wheels and it was a hex like that all the way down and then a taper so I've took the taper off the end and I've threaded it up there and that goes in there but what I'm just looking at is that it is shy of this piece by a small amount so what I'm going to do is skim skim this a bit so that it butts against this piece here hello there's the horn bolted on there's my new special nut and it seems okay there I'll probably just actually leave it like that I probably won't bother to weld it on Um, it's bolted on, it's got a new bolt, new washer, new washer, bolted on. Um, there are the wires that go to it. Okay, anyway, it's sitting there, it's pretty solid to be honest, it's very solid. It's, uh, you know, well mounted. I found my piece of tubing. Probably uh, once replacing really. But it is there. It's a pattern, isn't it, as to, you know, what it's supposed to look like. So that's a couple of little tinkering jobs. They all need doing at some point, so I might as well do them now. While I can't do any welding. This is a radiator that I bought off the guy in Sheffield that I bought the struts from. So I've just um, wrapped a glove around the hose and I'm just flushing it through. Don't know why it's coming out the uh, overflow. Not sure about that. Got a few radiators. I think that's the one off the car. That's another one. It looks in good condition, except it's been cut. It hasn't got the right things on the side. And that's another one there. Looks a bit kind of bashed about. Yeah, it's a bit bit like that there as well deteriorated probably work the one after the car is similar to that okay hello right back in a bit I put a different cap on there and it's not leaking out of there now so um, I think the cap that was on there wasn't long enough to seat but that cap's a 13 pound cap, so that's too, too heavy a cap for this application. It should only be a four pound. So, uh, yeah, but anyway, so at least I know it needs a long cap and it needs a four pound long cap. Useful little bit of uh, investigation there. Okay, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. What's the number one thing that you don't want to happen? When you try and undo the little drain tap, you don't want it to snap off, do you? I didn't, I didn't even turn it with any force, it just, just went. <laughs> okay, I managed to salvage this radiator tap off one of the radiators leaning up against the shed. I have freed it off just a hint, if you're ever using one of these, they're on a taper. So if you can tap that bit there, that way, it, it frees the taper off. That's a taper NPT. Here's my little bush. Now this was flanged. In other words, it was put in there and then flanged over to hold it in. That's why I struggled to pull it out. I didn't show me trying to get it out, but I struggled to pull it out. But I did get it out. So I've cleaned that up, and what I did, I put it in the lathe, 
and put a I drilled it out and put a tap through it so that's okay so I've cleaned that up I've cleaned that up and I need to clean that up then I can solder it back on again okay bit short of time but I have I put some baker's fluid on it I've got some solder and I, so I couldn't find my blowtorch but I've just found it so let's give this a go Knowing when to stop is the trick, and I don't think I've quite got the hang of that yet. I think I did a little bit too much there. So there's the little piece soldered in, still a little bit warm. There's my new tap, when I say new, salvaged from another radiator. That has to go in there. I'll probably put some thread pipe tape on it because I've run a tap through it. And what you hope is that you get it round to a I'll get it round to there and I have to call that good I think. So I'll put some Teflon tape on it and tighten that up. That'll have to do like that. That's draining. And that's off. Smash in. Okay. Yep, good. It works. It'll work, won't it? Right out. Simple little repair job. Back in a bit. I've got the radiator in. The top hose goes on. Uh, it looks like it's stretched a little bit, but it looks like that's how it was before, so that's all right. Uh, all the bolts went in okay. I'd filed it enough. I actually filed this one by mistake um, Unnecessarily, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's in. I've used new bolts new washers and The length is okay. Look it just sticks through the nut a little bit. I've got a new old stock hose there Which I'm struggling to put on so I thought okay. Well, I'll leave it because I need to probably put some lubrication on it to make it go on there nice and easy. Okay, yeah, so there's there's a few little tinkering jobs. Vacuum canister sort of test fitted. Horn fitted. Radiator selected. Repaired. Bottom tap selected and repaired not repaired you know just freed up um radiator cap a little bit of investigation to find out what i need on there i need a long four pounder and um i just go sort out some hose clips and that'll be it that'll that'll be done at, at that end of it the interesting thing will be to when i put some water in it yeah okay right i've got some things i need to do so i'm going to call it good at that oh just one last thing i'll just show you something relative to this it's a good job i had these to choose from because this tap just the bush turned the same as the other one um this one hadn't even got a tap in it it's just got a bung in it and this one is one i did get the tap out of but can you see how the tank is all ballooned up? That's because that's what happens when you run a cap with too high a poundage on it. This radiator looks like a good one actually. Oh, other than that. It does look in good condition other than this. This is just poor storage, isn't it? But that's that's an alternative if I have problems. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that, the way that had ballooned up. So there we are, another round of little jobs, all of which need doing. And you know what they say sometimes, there's no time like the present. Okay, thank you very much for joining me in the garage then. 
take care and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then, bye. Hello, I've just offered the floor piece in place uh, and it's looking not too bad. It's not looking too bad. I've trimmed away the um, inner wheel well here. So there's the new floor. You can see the flanges up there and I've scribed all the way around there and I've scribed all the way around up there as well. And I've scribed there. So I'll take that off now and I will drill holes in it for plug welds. That's how it looks on the inside. And you can see where I've cut the inner fender away there, the inner the fender well, the inner wheel well. And I, I did some shrinking just there on that flange to put a little curve into it. But in theory I can put some clamps through that end. You know, where where the uh, inner wheel well would be. So yeah, let, let's let's take it off and uh, do a little bit of trimming and see see what we've got. Well, there's my piece drilled and clamped in. I could do with. Uh, I hope maybe I can get a clamp down to there from from there. Maybe no, maybe not. Um. Yeah. yeah, it's not looking bad, not looking bad. So <clears throat> all these will get plug welded. <clears throat> this will get, not butt welded, but lap welded. I think I need to just bump it that way a tiny bit so this becomes a butt weld here. It shouldn't be overlapping here. It's only overlapping by a fraction. But it's quite light now, so what I'll do, I'll... I can see basically that it's going to work so what I will do is unclamp it take it off and paint the inside of the chassis rail and the inside of the um, you know the new piece and then I, I need to do some hammering and dollying on the flanges and then once I'm happy I'll get it welded in. I'll burn it in, as Brent says. That'll do for today. A lot of work that was, getting that bottom piece made up and in. Okay, righto, take care and I'll catch you on the next one. Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. Back to do a little bit on the 100A. I came in with a brush this morning and um, put another coat of put a coat of paint on the inside of these buck sections um, I had a little hole there on the side and I filled it I just was able to carefully weld onto it and build it up so that's alright ok when I'm ready I'm going to I'm going to fit this, this is my piece which will go there just like that except it'll be tucked under there yeah that'll be okay won't it it'll be good then the, the bit that I'm not looking forward to well I wasn't looking forward to any of it to be honest is that um, wheel arch repair there but that's you can't you know you can't do the next job before you've done the first job can you so let's concentrate on this one then and stop the uh, getting sidetracked. I will get it clamped in place and then touch through and clean up the metal on the flanges below. Let me just do a bit of trimming and finessing and I'll get that, I'll start welding it in. Hello. Hello, here we are. All that, that piece is all welded in, including um, a butt joint at the bottom there, and a lap joint at the side, and a lap joint at the top. 
and then um, plug welds all the way down through some come out better than others as always but you have to remember the metal on welding on too in some cases wasn't you know exactly prime so yeah not bad so the floor in this area is completely repaired isn't it I've done from one end to the other now that was the bit I was always fighting a bit shy of and while there was other major repairs you know like the front strut towers and the front corners I didn't um, I didn't weld this bit here I've just seen another little bit I could do so I might do that but anyway yeah so there we go so the piece that I am obliged to tackle next is the wheel arch I don't quite know how I'm going to do it I might do it in a series of smaller pieces I would love to just bash out that shape you know using um, I don't know a, a bag or wheels or shrinkers and stuff or an English wheel but I just haven't got that stuff I haven't got it I'm not a sheet metal worker but I can see kind of out to about here is relatively simple then this could be done in a series of, and then maybe down to there is relatively simple so I think maybe make a piece that comes to here and then bends in a bit so it's just got a little bit of a shrink then I make a piece that comes here and bends in a bit so it's got a bit of a shrink and then um, just put a piece in the in the join there but I can see holes as high up as there you know the higher up you go the more shape you've got to put in anyway that's that I will put my ear defenders on and grind these welds down while I have the opportunity now I don't like doing grinding work late in the evening so it's only mid afternoon now I'll have a go at this so I'll get that knocked down get the lumps knocked down not go too mad just knock the lumps down and um, put a coat of forget about it red on it so okay Right, I'll bring you back in a little bit. I, I could see a tiny bit of porosity in some of the welds. I don't know if I need to increase my gas pressure a little bit. I was trying to run the gas sort of at the minimum that was acceptable it might be that it was okay when I was testing it on brand new metal but if the metals a little bit you know old or got a little bit of rust in it maybe I need a bit more but anyway there we are there's a coat of red paint you know what that means don't you I can forget about that bit now. Yep, quite pleased with that. Bear in mind this piece here will come across and round and hide most of that. I'll get underneath and put some on underneath as well, I think. Righto, back in a bit. Hello, I'm beginning to tackle this part and this is an area I'm not very familiar with. I'm talking about this area of sheet metalwork, not this area of the car. And what you can see I've done here, I've cut, cut a piece of metal, put a flange on it, I've stretched this flange what I did I shrunk here hoping it would sort of start me off on this curve which it did to, to be honest it's not brilliant but it's not bad either 
So what I'm going to decide now is how to make a piece to go there. I mean, it's got a little bit too much of a lump here, but to be honest, I just haven't got hammers and dollies and things that would allow me to get that down. I haven't got an English well, haven't got anything really. I decided I couldn't do it in one piece, so I thought, well, that'll get part of it done, won't it? And I can imagine a piece coming here somehow, and then maybe just a filler piece in the, in the, in there. I can't really hammer and dolly it after the event. Yeah, I've got a little bit too much shape there. I'll try and bash some of that out of it. But I thought I'd just show you my first throw it in there job and see what it looks like. I'll get. Let's see if I can kind of finesse it a little bit. And then look at getting that part in. Hello, there's my piece clamped in place. I am going to plug weld in those holes there. Do a very light, probably just a couple of tacks actually, in the, across the top there. Oh, I think I need to scrape off some of the paint, but the idea is to just put a um, very light lap weld along the top and then plug weld at the bottom there. Maybe just back it up with a couple of little beads on the surface. It's not a bad approximation of the shape, um, you know, considering my amateur and beginner status when it comes to forming 3D shapes in metal. There's the piece that I've cut out which, if you hold it up to the light, you can see it's fairly frilly. But I think I've cut it up high enough to get onto good metal. Let's um, do a quick bit of scrapey scrapey and then uh, get a, at least some tack welds in. Okay, back in a little bit. There's that piece welded in on the inside of the arch there. four plug welds there. So how does one fill that gap in there then? Let me have a good look at this piece of metal and work out which bit's okay. I think basically from there down like that to there is okay so that side of it's okay so yeah it's, it's all a little bit awkward because, as you can see, I'm leaning in and it's actually hard for me to get both hands in without crawling inside the car. I'll have to have a think about the best way to get a piece of metal in there. OK, not bad, not bad. I'll bring it back when there's more to show. Got a piece of metal. I kind of bashed it about. And it sort of caps, caps that area there. I might just put a tack at the top there, a little tack. And then go inside the arch and scribe where the metal comes to. And then cut the tack, take it off. And then trim it to the lines, close to the lines. Just to give a very small lap. It's a bit lumpy here. Because I shrunk it here, all round here. But I, I think that's not too bad, to be honest. It's cut for um, plug welds down there, look. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll just put a little tack at the top. Hello. I trimmed the piece of metal down. And I just lent in and put some tacks on it. I think that looks okay, actually. Fingers crossed. I don't think the shape's too bad, to be honest. A little bit of a lump there, but you know, hey. What do you expect? What does one expect? It's a little bit awkward because it's hard for me to get both hands in at once. But, um, yeah, I'm getting there. Bit by bit. Bit by bit. Okay. I thought I'd just show you a, you know, a sort of in-between stage. 
Hello. Um, as you can see, I'm looking at a different angle. I'm looking from across the other side of the car. And I've just come in this side of the car. I've got my kneeling mat down here. And I could get better access. So I've come in from here and welded that all in. It was a lot better than leaning in through the door and trying to do everything one handed. Because I find it good to be able to steady my hand with my left hand, if you see what I mean. Or at least steady myself. Okay, right, I just need to get under and try and do some um, plug welds. But that part of the job, to be honest, has gone pretty well and the metal forming although not up to you know RAC garage or Kyle Carter or Scott Newstead standards is not too bad I think and I was pleased actually to be able to do it in two pieces I was thinking I might have to do three anyway yeah I'm pleased with that I think that's pretty good right out Let's um, get those plug welds in then and we can get a bit of red paint on that. Okay, back in a bit. Hello, got my plug welds in, they went in okay. And that's how the patch looks from the inside. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Yeah, blimey, you know, you have to consider what it was like before. So let's have a look on the inside. There we go. A little bit of a gap there. Look, I need to fill that. Just see so you know, hammer the metal in a bit. There we go. Great. Excellent. I'm very pleased with that. Doesn't look out of place. A little bit, bit of an excessive bulge in it, but you know, hey. What was it like before? That's what you have to ask yourself. That's pretty sound, to be honest. We've got a few more bits of daylight there that I need to eliminate. Okay, but as I say, another job for another day. You can't do it all in one go. Okay. Blimey. That is quite an achievement, isn't it, when you consider I've welded from right the way down there, all the way along, across there, all the way along here, all the way across there to the middle, all the way back, pieces inserted underneath, pieces inserted underneath there, and all the way there, and now that, that's, and then the piece at the back as well on this side. So yeah, brilliant, great. Really pleased with that. Wow, that's, Quite an achievement. Even though I say it myself, that's quite an achievement. And a bit of a first for me for having a go at forming, you know, um, compound curves on a piece of metal. I think that uh, shrinker stretcher is a good tool. I borrowed that off Jeff. I might have to look at getting my own. That's pretty good, that is. If I had an English wheel, I could try and do stuff like this, but I just haven't got it. I haven't got one. You know, you could sort of smooth it out a bit better afterwards. Anyway, okay, don't know hear me waffling on. Well, there we go then. That's quite a repair. When you, when you look at the big picture, that piece underneath, all that bit there underneath, that piece on the inside, This was a good idea. I got my little ladder there and um, I had it there and prop, prop the door open and then came in here and just leant across there and did that. So it's sometimes it's good to sort of change your, you know, viewpoint and change your method of access and you get better access from this side, funnily enough. It's awkward leaning in through the door Okay, great. Righto, thanks very much for joining me in the garage. Take care, 
and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye.